name is uh, Ronnie Phillips. I'm uh, 23. I'm an aspiring MMA fighter. Who's ready for our big boys? 6'5. I walk around 215, 218, depending on the day. And my wingspan is about 84 inches. reason for fighting is one the competitiveness of it like the, the to me it's a pure thing you know it takes a lot of heart for someone to get in that cage and and, and it's just you and you by yourself you and one other person so like to me it, you don't have anyone following it's just you alone by yourself so just the purity of it and I just I'm gonna strive to be like the, like dominant People, pardon my French, people, you know, tend to think I'm a bit of an asshole, but it's just a lot of stuff I've seen growing up involving my mom and other stuff in my life, it kind of dictates the way I see things. I, I feel like I'm a little callous to certain things, because like, I've seen, a lot of people don't know this, but I see my mom get, you know, get beat up by guys, a lot of abuse with guys, uh, have the house raided for drugs two or three times, and just stuff like that. And so like I said, Stuff like that, it sticks with me and I try to, I just don't have a tolerance for, for dumb stuff because I've seen too much of it growing up. I can remember waking up and I had, you know, the one piece little kid outfit, those pajama things with the feeties. And, you know, you wake up and, you know, you see some dude beating up your mom and it's like, you know, I'm four, you know, three, four years old. What, what, what can I do? He's a grown man. I can't do anything. Just seeing stuff like that and, you know, and just the helplessness of it, uh, that, it really bothers me. Do you live alone or do you live with family? Family of sorts. She's say she's she's like a second mom, and she's one of the reasons I strayed away from it's getting in trouble and stuff like that. She helped me in that sense, and she's been helping me ever since. So she's definitely uh, one of the people I lean on most in my life. Do I have a good relationship with my mom? Um, in the beginning, it, it wasn't so much because uh, I've always been the type of person to um, go off and do my own thing and try to be in independent. If I had a, a bad feeling going on, I always kept it to myself. I felt like speaking on my, on my emotions was a weakness, so I never did it. Like, yeah, now me and my mom definitely have a better relationship than we did in the beginning, and I'm definitely happy and grateful for it. You know, she, she, I'm the first person she calls if she doesn't understand something or if she needs help with one of my little brothers. And like, that's just something. You gotta cherish a relationship like that. And I definitely do. So, you know, if it wasn't for mom, I wouldn't be here. Where do I train? Royce Gracie Jiu Jitsu, the Wolfpack under Robbie Kodaki. How often do you train? Uh, I train uh, Monday through Friday, uh, 5 to uh, about 8.30. And when I'm getting ready to fight, to actually get in shape, you know, come in on the weekends, get some extra time in by myself, work more technical stuff, more technique. I met Robbie by fighting his guy. Um, that was my first fight. I fought against him in his gym. And um, him and his son were just impressed by, like, my performance. And, um... I had a falling out with my, my prior coach, and you know I came here and I you know I talked to Robbie because I had trained with him once before at cross training, and I just asked him if you know if I if I could train under him, and he you know without hesitation said yeah I could. He accepted me in, so I'm grateful to him and to his gym for bringing me in.
plan, he would have won the fight. You know, but my whole thing is I have to find my median where I'm the right amount of aggressive, but I'm not too sloppy and I'm always precise, you know, with my strikes, with my transitions, on the ground, my technique and stuff like that. So yeah, you just gotta be, can ever be too reckless in my eyes. That's when you make mistakes, you get sloppy, you get too ahead of yourself. What's my style of fighting? Um, honestly, I have, to, I have to say a balance, and that's the way I like to be um, as far as this. If a guy, I just want to be methodical and calculate, and if a guy makes a mistake, I want to be able to capitalize on that, on that mistake. Jiu-Jitsu, kickboxing, Muay Thai, just different types of art that you can mold together and write your own poetry as you fight. I feel like balance, and especially nowadays, just like with any sport, the athletes get better and better as the years go on. So you have to be able to do everything, you know, because if I get in there with a guy who, is, who can punch just as good as me, but, you know, I have to be able to, you know, take him to the ground and submit him. And it's just all about capitalizing on advantages. So I definitely want to be a balanced dog fighter. Worst part about fighting? It's a hard question for me. I think the hardest part is the unknown sometimes. Like, you don't know, really know what can happen from one moment to the next. You just try to prepare as best you could for every possible situation. And you just go with the flow. I just try to remain pretty much as calm as possible because, in my eyes, that's the best way to go into a fight calm, calculating. When you, you get angry, you make mistakes. That's when people make the dumbest mistakes. I've had a lot of opportunities slip away because either my own ignorance acting dumb and letting it slip away or just, you know, my attitude and stuff like that. So like this is a just it's an opportunity I don't want to let go. I definitely want to achieve and prove everybody wrong that, you know, I can do this. No matter how many great fighters are in the world, I can be one of the best fighters in the world. You know, it's times I wanna go out during the week or you know, I hear about a party, I wanna go hang out with my friends, but you know what? I I can't do that because I have to be in the gym, I have to be working out, I can't just skip and I feel like people don't realize that if you wanna be successful you gotta sacrifice certain things, you gotta put in the hard work to achieve that. It's not just gonna fall in your lap. And it took me a while to kind of realize that. But you know, really doing this, I finally realized that, you know, this is what you have to do. You have to sacrifice things, and you have to put in the work, the hours to achieve that. Like, to, you know, for people to look back and, you know, he damn, he did so much in his life, not just, you know, in the ring, but, you know, for other people. Like, he left, he left marks on people. You know, we can never forget what he did and what type of person he was, and that's, that's what I want. Ultimately. And like I said, I have no illusions of, of grandeur overnight. Like I know it's going to be a long road, you know, some, some downfalls where I have to pick myself up and, and learn to move on again. But I'm prepared for that. You know what I mean? I'm ready for it. So that's my definition of success. Do I have any regrets in life? Uh, that's a. I guess it's a yes and no because I mean it's hard to regret. So it's hard to regret something that shaped your life, but at the same time you kind of wish you can go back and redo it. Um, so I guess I'm gonna have to say no because you know who's to say if I hadn't done that stuff that I would have ended up where I am now with this opportunity in my hand. But then again, who's to say that if I had done things different, I would have been a dip, you know, different place. So it's just I can't really answer that honestly. Where do I see myself 10 years from now? Uh, I definitely see myself, if not fighting in the UFC, definitely fighting somewhere, whether it be in, in Japan or, or wherever, somewhere in the world. And just, you know, 
uh, and having a good time, enjoying myself, and just like I said, proving everybody wrong, you know. Uh, my record at the moment is is 0-1-0. Oh, one, oh. uh, one, one loss by decision. All right, and the winner of this one, all three rounds, is the Blue Cross! Jeff? No matter what they say, you won that fight. Every put some money in there knows that, right? Hey, I don't care what those judges say, dude. You took that guy and beat him down. Yeah. You know, so don't don't, don't, don't dare be ashamed of what happened yeah. out there. Um, after my last fight, how do I feel? Um, just disappointment in myself. I, you know, I, I, I cried a little bit, and. Just, just because, like I said, I'm, I, I love to compete and I hate, I hate to lose, especially when I know I could have done more in order to win. I de like I said, I definitely feel like I won the fight, but in MMA, leaving it to the judges is not something you want to do. And like I said, in every loss, there's always a lesson. It's just how you choose to look at it. Now I know never to leave it to the judges' hand. You know, go in and end the fight like I know I can. I have a fight coming up March 3rd, and I'm fighting a guy named Kenneth Rogers. He's a debut fighter. This fight, and then the one after, is basically like a, a qualifying thing to fight for a belt. I have the choice to either fight light heavyweight or heavyweight, and for me, that's a big thing. I mean, my name's out there with people, so that's a good thing, but you know, if it's Ronnie Phillips, the light heavyweight, it would mean a lot, lot more, and it's basically like a building a resume. Like, you know, when I finally turned pro, you know, what has he really done that he deserves to make this amount of money or so on and so on. So I definitely want to, you know, get in there, execute my game plan and, and get the W. It means a lot. It's, it's a big thing for me as far as my career.